Great, wonderful. So thank you. Um, thank you, uh, JP Morgan Chase, and I'm going to introduce Chase and I'm to introduce Julie. And thank you, students, participants who are joining us. So my name is Judy Stewart. I work in the Business Career Center, and I am joined by Tricia Canizero and others on my team. We are very, very happy to welcome for the first time at UConn, JP Morgan Chase. And I'm going to introduce Haley, and then she's gonna take it from here. But I just wanna tell you three, three facts that I just learned about JP Morgan Chase. Um, they are the oldest financial institution in the United States. They've been in business for 200 years. They have um, over $2 trillion in client assets. They are in over 100 global markets and they have 250,000 employees. So for that reason, I am thrilled um, to have Haley Blackman join us. She's going to tell us a little bit about joining Chase, what their careers look like, uh, what the path is like. And so without further ado, um, Haley Blackman, thank you for being with us at UConn today. And we are thrilled to hear what you have to say. Awesome. Thanks so much, Judy. It is honestly a pleasure to join you all today. I am so excited um, to be able to get this opportunity and talk about this amazing program. Um, so just to confirm, can everyone see my shared screen? It should say choose a career with choice. Awesome. Thanks, Natalia, for the thumbs up. Um, so today I you know, I'll just introduce myself. So my name is Haley Blackman. I am a campus recruiter at JP Morgan Chase. Um, I've been with the firm for about a year and a half now. Um, I specifically recruit for a program called the Chase Leadership Development Program, and that's the program I'm going to be talking about today, as long as well as some tips on applying and just the general application process. So let me go ahead and change my slide. Okay, so I'm going to talk about JP Morgan Chase as a whole and then kind of bring it down to the program so you can see how it relates. Um, so what is JP Morgan Chase? We are a leading global financial services firm. Um, so we are one of those companies that is in one of every two households. Um, we are present in over 100, 100 countries. Um, so we have this global presence that really leads the board and really sets the tone for what the rest of the world is doing when it comes to your banking solutions. Um, you know, we have just as had Judy had said, you know, we have been around for over 200 years. Um, so your parents, grandparents, family members, friends have probably banked with us or, you know, somebody who's banked with us. So we are somebody who is currently evolving and adapting with the times. Um, as our CEO, Jamie Dimon, likes to say, we are also a technology firm, even more so with our current COVID environment, really took us out of our normal in the workplace, you know, meeting our clients face to face and then turning it all into this virtual platform. So today, you know, there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of careers we have. Literally, there's over 250,000 employees that work here. Um, you know, and so there's really an opportunity for everyone. So when you think of a financial services institution or even a bank, it's not just for those tellers who work in a bank and process transactions or for, you know, those people that you picture on Wall Street in those suits who are doing trades and involved in investments and helping you know, large institutions or seriously, you know, very wealthy people. This is including everyone. We help people from age before zero to, you know, after they retire and into retirement. You know, we do everything from marketing to communication, strategy, business development, project execute, execution, um, finances, human resources, audit. Um, you know, there is literally opportunities for every area you could possibly imagine, um, all at the fingertips of our company here. Now, our company is based into six primary, what we're going to call lines of business. 
Um, I'm going to use some acronyms just because we refer to a lot of things in acronyms. So I do apologize. Hopefully one day when you do work at JP Morgan Chase, we do have a cheat sheet um, that will break down all the acronyms for you. So lines of business or what we call LOBs um, are kind of how we divide our businesses up. So we have six core ones, asset and wealth management, commercial banking, consumer and community banking, corporate and investment bank, as well as the corporate function and technology. Um, so I'm only going to focus on one today because that really centers around our program um, and our program operates in this line of business and that's consumer and community banking. So a couple fun facts about consumer and community banking. There is over half the employees in the company, so about 112,000 that just resolve in consumer and community banking. Consumer and community banking is also the line of business that generates the most income for the company. Um, we generate over 75% of the company's income. Um, consumer and community bank is also what we call the Chase brand. So JP Morgan Chase is kind of divided into two separate houses. So the corporate function is that JP Morgan and Chase brand, while things like asset and wealth management, commercial banking, and the corporate investment bank is considered the JP Morgan brand. And then consumer and community banking is that Chase brand. So what does that mean? So the Chase brand are things like when you go into banking um, or into consumer and community banking and you see that Chase branch and you can go in and you can open your first credit card or get your first card loan or buy your first house or start your first investment account or savings account. That is all things that are intertwined with the Chase brand. Um, we're really focused on serving our people, um, helping them bank, save, finance. Um, again, it is our biggest line of business and therefore one of our most important and impactful ones. So this is just a little plug. If you're interested in any of our careers, while I'll only really be focusing on one specific um, program today, jpmorganchase.com forward slash careers is where you'll be able to find all different opportunities. So whether you are a sophomore or a junior or even a senior who's looking for opportunities as soon as starting in May or you've already graduated and you're looking for opportunities, this is where you can find all of our opportunities from undergraduate to postgraduate to doctorate and MBA levels. So specifically with consumer and community banking, um, what you can do as part of the Chase Leadership Development Program is it is not those client facing opportunities that you will have. Um, this is going to be something where you're working internally with our internal business partners, engaging in high impact projects to provide best in class industry solutions. So this can be anything from, you know, developing a um, new credit card for us to use. For example, we partner with Amazon. So if anybody has an Amazon credit card, that's us. Um, so, you know, developing the rewards and the benefits that go along with that. Um, or developing and creating a marketing campaign for our new savings accounts that allow those who are in high school and in college to start saving and learn about, you know, what savings is and how to build a savings account. Um, in this program, you're going to get a comprehensive look at Chase focused on matters that are a value add to our business and have a real life impact on our customers. So while you may not be working face to face with our customers, what you'll be doing will be, you know, impacting the daily lives of our customers and those benefits um, that they receive that help them function. So everything from a small business owner um, to a, you know, college student to somebody who's preparing for retirement, everything you do is going to have an impact. Um, our program really focuses on building your analytical marketing and strategic and strategic thinking skills um, while adding value to our key CCB initiatives. Another fun acronym, CCB is our consumer and community banking. Um, so we offer a framework for career growth through unmatched training and really exciting experiences through all of our businesses. Um, so we're a really collaborative culture and we really promote your success wherever it takes you. Um, so inside the company, outside the company, we want to help. 
as for this is one of our current analysts, um, you know, just talking a little bit about the program. Um, so the Chase Leadership Development Program will provide you with a diverse skill set working across different businesses as you gain a deep understanding of how we operate as a company and serve our customers. You will network with senior employees and interact with fellow analysts. Everyone is willing to help you jumpstart and grow your career. It's amazing about this program is the stake and the ability our analysts have to have a seat at the table and to make an impact. This is not your typical internship or full-time program. Um, you're not assigned busy work. Everything you're doing has a real life impact. It is a real role that has potential um, to really make a difference in the company. Um, you'll be working on very high impact projects that have a lot of visibility from our senior leadership team. Um, so it's our analysts are truly an asset to our company. And when you have that CLDP or Chase Leadership Development Program name attached to you, you have the ability to, you know, have great career mobility and really stand out when it comes to networking with some of our senior employees. So here's a little summary of the Chase Leadership Development Program. We talked about how it operates within consumer and community banking, which just means that all of your roles fall under that line of business, but there's a lot of variation within those roles. Under consumer and community banking, that Chase brand, we have six core Chase business units. Um, it's kind of, it's like a tree branching down. So this is not a test, so you won't have to remember this. Um, but just something to kind of be aware of that this could be an area of opportunity for an internship or one of your full time rotations. So we have Chase Wealth Management, business banking, consumer banking, home lending, auto and card services. So I kind of touched on how those can relate. Um, but the internship is up to a 10 week internship tied to our CCB business priorities um, and growth strategies. For example, one of our priorities right now is we have a whole bunch of programs. Um, our credit cards are tied to a whole bunch of travel programs, such as American Airlines. Right now, we are seeing an increase in people signing up for our Amazon credit card, but a decrease in our business partners that do travel programs or travel benefits. A lot of our cards are linked to travel benefits. So one of the things that some of our analysts are working on is developing ideas to keep our Amazon credit card sales up, but also how do we increase this need for travel when people aren't traveling? How do we make our travel credit cards look appealing um, when people aren't needing as many travel benefits. So for that is something, a potential project you could end up working on. Um, and then our summer internship, if you know you do well and you really wanna pursue with the program, at the end of it, you have the opportunity to receive a offer for our full-time analyst program. Now what that is, that is our program that is two years in length and it is rotational. So our summer analyst program isn't rotational, so you would only be in one area, for example, business banking. But as a full-time analyst, you will do three different eight-month rotations. So you could do a rotation in business banking, card services, and auto, holding different positions such as a project manager, a um, business analyst, and then a financial analyst. So you can really change. There's a lot of areas of opportunity. And our internship is offered in four locations as well as the full-time program. So that's the Columbus Metro area, New York Metro area, Wilmington, Delaware, as well as the Dallas Metro area. I've also included our recruiter inbox at the bottom. So if you do have questions after this session, feel free to reach out. I have direct access to that inbox. So happy to answer any questions regarding that. Um, but it's really a great program. Um, throughout the program, at least the internship and full time, you have access to networking, mentorship, senior leaders, training um, on all of our different programs that we use. We don't you we don't have any requirements when it comes to majors or coming in with any sort of experience or technical skills, such as like we're not asking you to code or know a certain amount of languages. But if you are passionate about that and want to learn, we will give you those tools to succeed. Now, what I want to take some time on right now is to talk about some career prep and opportunities um, that you have to, you know, really make your application stand out. 
um, and how to set yourself apart and prepare yourself for the JP Morgan Chase application process. So the interview process, this is a little bit of a summary, kind of how to prepare. I'll be breaking this down in the next couple of slides. Um, you know, some of the ideas is be ready to share some of specific examples. So how to tie your past experience into your current experience for your interviews, you know, being ready in every sense. So technology connection, looking professional, treating it as if it were an in-person interview. Um, interview processes can vary um, by which program you apply for. So specifically today, like I said, we're talking about the Chase Leadership Program, but they can vary depending on if you're really interested in technology, they have a little bit different of a process as they have some technical requirements. And then finally, there's an assessment portion, which I'll get into later, which we use a application called HireVue, which is essentially just a video interview that you record yourself answering some preset questions. Um, the big thing about this is the interview process is not only a process for us to interview you, but for you to interview us to figure out, you know, is this where I want my career to go? Is it just where I see myself in the next eight weeks? Or is this where I see myself in the next 10 years? What can I do at JP Morgan Chase and what can JP Morgan Chase do for me? So constructing your candidacy. So first step, prepare, prepare, prepare. I can't emphasize this enough. Um, you may not always be the smartest one in the room, but you can be the one who is most determined to succeed. I think this is really important when you go in everything from interviews to meetings. Um, you may not be the best person on the topic, but you're that person who's taking notes, willing to learn more, asking those important questions that will stand out nine times out of 10 more than the person who knows everything. Um, attend presentations and get to know members of the recruiting team. You can check that off. You're here today. You made a huge step in that process. Seek out students who intern at the firms in which you are interested. So LinkedIn's your friend here. Definitely use LinkedIn to find interns who maybe, maybe you can't find a specific program, but networking, it's a big, big thing. So having them maybe introduce you to another intern who did intern in that program you're interested in. Know the difference between firms and their competitors. Um, this one's also key. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a cover letter say, dear colleagues of Morgan Stanley, um, we are JP Morgan. So, you know, always make sure you know the company that you're talking to and your resume and your cover letters are reflecting that company that you are interested in when you are applying. Prepare for all interviews and meetings. This is when your friends and your colleagues and your family are your go-tos. Don't be afraid to practice in front of them. It's awkward, we all know it, um, but it's important to feel confident when you go into those meetings and go into those interviews. Take advantage of workshops that are offered by your school or resume reviews from your career center, um, or even recruiters reach out to them, say, hey, can, I, can you look at my resume or give me any tips that you think would really make me stand out? Is there a way I can reword this description? Keep current on general business news, um, Wall Street Journal. Um, there are different podcasts I know everyone listens to, as well as subscribing to different um, newsletters that you can get. So definitely keep up to date with JP Morgan Chase and our competitors. Like I said, utilize Career Center resume and interview workshops and become active in clubs in your area of interest. So if there's a finance club, business club, analytics club, engineering club, definitely join those um, and you know find people of like interest. Know your story. So this is your elevator pitch. Be confident, be brave, and knock them out of the park. Um, it's really important to be able to articulate your resume. So listing all of your experiences is great, but we wanna hear you be able to tell a story with them. Um, you know, we want to know why are you a good fit? How can your background and previous skills relate to this current role? Um, so why this industry are some things to build your story around? What area in the firm interests you and why? Why are you a good fit? And what steps have you taken to prepare yourself to be an analyst? If you don't have a prior internship experience, that is not a reason to not apply. Um, we're not looking for people with 10 years of experience. That's not something we're here to do. We're looking for people who come from a multitude of backgrounds and walks of life to bring their fresh, fresh perspective 
into our business so we can you know set our business up for the next generation which is all of you on this call um so don't you know if you just had that one babysitting job or you maybe worked you know in a retail area and that's all you have that is perfectly fine you can take that experience something you learned and build that to apply to any job that you look at i always recommend when you're making or creating your resume having the job description right next to it pull those words from it you know it'll say analytical thinking um you know strategic skills communication you know i use communication to do this and xyz those are things that okay like you have this we need this check so those are just important things to take into account when you're creating your application start with a strong resume um, so your resume is a 2D portrait of yourself. You want your resume to tell a story, but more importantly, tell the story of why you are the best fit for this role. This is super important. Your resume, um, you know, I don't always love just a resume. That's why I love this higher view portion that we have, but your resume really sets the tone. You are being assessed based on your resume first. That is what we call like the first round, your resume. So definitely, you know, your resume should be a strong representation of who you are, and it should reflect each role you're applying to. You shouldn't have to rewrite your resume completely if you're applying to similar roles, um, but it should change based on the role that you're applying for to some degree. So what makes a good resume? First is the look. So even before I start to read your resume as a recruiter, how do I want it to look? I want the length to be one page maximum, content to be clear, concise, and relevant, presentation, error-free, proofread, use correct tense, consistent formatting, and font. So no crazy fonts, no comic sans, or anything too crazy. Keep it simple, keep it the same color, um, keep the sizes relatively the same. You can bold certain areas, um, but in, when it comes to the content, so the words, your name, super important, don't forget your name, um, make it big right on top so we know your name, contact information, so a phone number or an email address that you have access to. Um, so, you know, if you haven't used an email in 10 years, don't put that one down because you just don't, you think that spam's going to go to it. If you, a recruiter reaches out to you, you want them to be able to reach out to you and you to respond quickly. Um, and then a phone number is usually good, a relevant phone number. Um, as well as location. So you don't have to give your full address, um, but a city and a state is preferred, just so we know, you know, if you're applying to a New York office, but you are from California, that's just something that we like to take into consideration and we will discuss with you. You won't be eliminated um, just because you're looking at moving locations, but we just want to understand what that transition may look like. Education, this is really important. Um, your college, your major, if you have any minors. GPA is a question I always get. You know, I recommend not putting anything on your resume unless it's above a 3.0. Um, if you don't put it on your resume, that's fine. Or if you have, you know, a 2.9, that's fine if you want to put it on. But I always recommend at least a 3.0 if you are going to put it on your resume. Any relevant work experience, extracurricular activities, awards, skills and language and interests. Um, keep it appropriate, um, as well as saving as a PDF before emailing it. That's It's just something that's a nice touch. If you can't do that, that's totally understandable. Word document is acceptable, um, but a PDF is just a nice way to have it so it's formalized. Um, the experience. Um, so how are you defining your experience and relating it back to the job? So start with action words, things like analyzed, coordinated, evaluated, implemented, produced. Um, these are some great words you can do to show that you you actioned and did something, not I did this and we did that. And, you know, synonyms are my friend on Word is just highlighting a word and then looking up for the synonyms. If you like want to use the same one, definitely use that just to change it up. Um, describe or emphasize major projects or responsibilities. So if it's a school based project. Um, or if it's a project related to an internship, definitely emphasize them, showing you know what your part was and what the result was. You don't have to get into the nitty gritty numbers, um, but definitely show your how you made an impact in that situation. 
highlight teamwork with words like assisted or contributed and include value added. Um, so you increase efficiency, reduce costs. So again, not numbers related, related. If you do have them, that's great. Um, but you know, what was that end result? What can we associate what you did with that specific project or um, line of work that you did? Um, those are usually the best ways just to kind of make your resume stand out. So preparing for your interview. So at this point, you know, you turned in your resume, you submitted your application. Now you're preparing, you've got the call, you're going to do, to do an interview, you've made it, um, take a deep breath because you totally have this, you know, you made it to this point. Um, know the job. Again, this all goes back to the job description, meeting people who've worked this job, understand what the firm does, its competitors, and how it has made a difference in the marketplace. So I can guarantee you with a firm like JP Morgan Chase, we're in the news almost every day, multiple times a day. So pull up an article that you maybe like thought was really interesting, ask your interviewer questions on it. That shows that you went above and beyond what was simply asked to show that you are interested in this role. Tell them why you're the best. Um, qualifications are not always the only thing considered in a hiring decision. Um, the person who scores the job is often the person who does the best selling themselves by responding thoughtfully to questions and showcasing what they have to offer the job and the team. This goes back to not always being the smartest person in the room, but being the one who's most determined to learn. So who are you as a candidate? Um, know your application. So this goes back to telling your story, um, making sure that everything on your application you can speak to. Um, I always just say, you know, if you write down your application, you can speak Spanish. You may be asked to speak Spanish, so make sure everything on your application is authentic. Have someone review it, discuss it, and give you feedback. This is also really important. Write down your responses. So if during the interview you want a notepad, that is completely okay. Um, you can write down, you know, what you're talking about. So if you want to refer it back to, refer back to it, or if the interviewer makes a really interesting point that you want to remember or bring up later, don't be afraid to write it down. With that being said, don't feel like you have to take notes through the whole interview. This is just one or two key things that you feel are important to either readdress or you want to remember in your mind when you write a thank you note, um, but you should be present and making eye contact throughout the entire interview. Interviews, first impressions. So a job interview doesn't start with the first question. Hiring managers begin to assess candidates from the moment they arrive. So the moment you show up on Zoom WebEx or whatever video conference system that you're currently using for interviews. Um, so here are things to consider as you walk through those interview doors or join that call. Are you on time? So if you're in person, we always recommend 10 to 15 minutes early. With video, somebody could be on the video right then. So try to join either like a minute before or right on time. Um, attire, are you well-groomed, professional? So at least from, you know, the hips up, Make sure that you're ready, but you can totally have your slippers on. Um, body language, are you making eye contact? How's your posture? Are you sitting up straight? Are you like looking at the camera? We do understand your camera can be in funky places. Um, so that's understandable, but as long as you're not reading or looks like you're reading off a piece of paper, completely staring into space, do your best to make eye contact with wherever your camera is. Communication, are you positive? Are you polite? Are you inquisitive? Um, you know, making sure that you are excited in your tone that to be there, to be present, to be doing the interview. Preparedness, did you bring your resume or other supplies? So you shouldn't have to bring your resume for our interviews. We do have them on file, um, but always have like a notepad or something to take notes on during the interview, just to show you're prepared. Um, enthusiasm, did you flash a smile or raise your eyebrows? You know, if you're hunched over and your eyes are kind of glazed over, it can be misinterpreted as uninterested. So do your best for that 30 minutes or that hour to you know, really be excited to be there, like how you would treat it as an in-person interview. What makes a good interviewee? So be able to articulate why you're a good fit and relate your prior experience to this specific opportunity. So speak calmly, professionally, intelligently, talk about all your key skills. So your leadership, teamwork, your quantitative, qualitative skills, um, you know, if you have any technical skills, it's a great idea to bring them up. Um, and also a big point, admit when you do not know answers to questions. So if you're asked a question, um, like if a technical question or if you're asked a question specifically about JPMorgan Chase, 
best way to answer that is, you know, you know, I really appreciate that question really made me think, unfortunately, I don't know the answer, but I would love to learn more. Um, or I would love to do that research and figure out the answer or, you know, what can you tell me? What can I be doing to learn more? Um, so I'm more prepared in the future, you know, take it as a learning opportunity as you're not expected to know everything. Um, so don't be afraid to admit when you don't know, instead of just guessing at the answers. Interview finish strong. Um, so show your passion for the role and let the interviews know that you want the job, push yourself above the competition. Um, really make it count. This is your final moment. This is your opportunity to ask those questions that you really want to know. Always be prepared with questions. Um, you know, be creative with your questions. The interviewers get the same questions over and over again. You know, what do you do on a day to day basis? Now, that question is perfectly fine and it shows your interest. Um, but don't be afraid to, you know, ask your interview about, you know, what is the culture like at the company you work for? What can I expect on a level of, you know, work life balance? You know, things that are important to you, you want to know the answer to, too. Um, close the deal. So reiterate the interest. Next steps in timeline, you know, when am I going to hear back? Is there another interview? What does that look like? And ultimately express gratitude. Um, show your thanks for getting this opportunity to intern to interview is the most important. Then after the interview, follow up. A personalized note is the best way to do that. So sending an email is something I always recommend. Um, so you can send, if your interviewer doesn't give you an email, there should be some point of contact, whether that's a scheduler, an event specialist, a recruiter that you can reach out to and ask them to send your thank you note. Always customize it to the interview. So if you talked about something like you both had an interest in a certain sports team or you both you know, enjoy reading or listening to a certain podcast, bringing that up in the thank you note helps jog their memory and remember you. Um, so don't worry if you don't talk about anything like that during the interview, that doesn't mean that they're gonna forget about you, but it's always important to customize your interview note and make it look like, you know, it's not just a thank you, but, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time on this day, on this date, um, you know, enjoy talking about this thing, um, you know, can't wait to hear more. Thank you, thank you, or best, kind regards, and then your name is always really important. So again, avoid using copy and paste is the most important thing. So you have the tips, now let's apply. So, our application process is about four different steps. I'm going to try to go through this quickly just so we have time for questions. Um, first step is Pymetrics. Um, after you submit your application, you'll immediately receive an email. By immediately, I mean within the next 24 hours to complete something called Pymetrics. It is a game based assessment. It is not an end all be all. So this is not a pass fail. If anything, it's more for you. If you don't know which program you want to apply for, Pymetrics is a great way to play the game and it'll show you attributes that you have and what programs may best fit your interests. Once you complete Pymetrics, you don't have to do it again. So if you do apply to multiple programs, you'll only have to complete Pymetrics once. Next is higher view. So higher view is what I talked about prior. So after you complete Pymetrics, you'll also receive an invite within the next 24 hours via email to complete the first round of video or virtual interview. Um, so it's usually anywhere from four to five questions. They are preset. They're normally behavioral based, unless you're applying for technology, which is a little bit different. Um, and, you know, there are questions like, you know, name a time you faced a problem and how did you solve it? You'll have about one to two minutes to answer. Um, and you do have two tries. The only big tip I always say is you have two tries, but if you really like your first try and want to try again, your second try will be taken as your final option. So your first try, if you like it, just move on to the next question rather than possibly do the second try and mess up. Um, but there are tons of practice questions. So always use the practice questions. They're super helpful and super relevant to the questions you'll be asked during our higher views. Um, you know, treat this as an in-person interview. Look professional, you know, set the stage, make sure your connection's working, um, speak slowly and clearly, and ultimately, you know, be yourself. We're looking for authentic people to work here. So here's just a little summary of our recruiting timeline. So our applications will actually open this week for our internships. 
Um, don't hold me to that. They may open next week too. So just keep an eye on our website. Um, our interview days will start in July to September. So if you apply tomorrow or whenever the applications open, don't panic if it's two weeks from now and you haven't heard anything back. We typically reach out to you about two weeks prior to the interview day um, to start scheduling for the interviews. Um, so you around July to September timeframe, you will hear something back. Um, from September to December, that is when you would hopefully receive and accept your summer internship. From June to August of next year was where you would complete your nine to 10 week summer internship. Then at the end of the internship, you have the opportunity, depending on performance, to receive an offer for the full time program. And then postgraduate is July to August is when you would attend your full time induction training. And again, this is just a summary of the application process. So you apply, you'll receive the email for Pymetrics, complete Pymetrics, hire view. You'll receive the email, complete hire view, and then you would be invited to a super day um, or our interview day. It's super, super important key fact. You must complete steps one through three for your application to be considered complete and to be considered for an interview day. Um, so if you have any issues with that, Again, on the next page, I have the CLDP recruiting inbox. Please reach out to me if you, when you're in the application process, if you get stuck or have any questions. Um, and I will definitely check on your application to see where you're at or if we're missing anything. Um, but I believe that is the end of the presentation. So I can turn it back over to Judy. Thank you, Thank Hallie. You. That was so comprehensive. Thank you. Thank you. I am actually going to. Um, uh, hold on to that deck because there's amazing information in there and, and, and share it as well. Um, so um, the students that are with us, if you want to ask questions on video or chat, um, now is your time. I just want to reiterate that what Hallie is talking about for the undergraduate population is applying for summer 2022. Um, and Hallie, the one question that I have is, I know that you mentioned that the application is on your Chase website. Will it also be on Handshake as well? Yes, great question, Judy. It will be on Handshake as well. Okay, perfect. Okay, let me see. Okay, no, that was just... Um, and for those students who may be interested in full-time, they are also talking about the following summer so if anybody is graduating in may um that is not part of this leadership track but they can apply for a regular job correct and if we do have full-time positions so our internship um our full-time positions are primarily offered to our interns at the end of the internship but if we do have applications available those will be posted in the September, October timeframe. So if you're looking for a full-time job starting in August of 2022, so you graduate um, either this fall or May 22, so next spring, um, your key dates to look for an application would be in September or October of this year. So they won't be posted quite yet. So if you are interested in a rotational full-time program, there may be spots available, just the application comes out a bit later. Okay. And would it be likely that in early April, we would see something on Handshake um, for the following summer? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, students that are with us, questions? Okay, we do have a question here. And I will read it unless... Uh, the student says, thank you for the information. I'm a graduate student graduating this May with a master's in business analytics and project management. I'm interested in full-time opportunities starting June of this year. How can, how can I apply? That's a great question. So that same website does have our full-time opportunities listed on it. So there's two sides to the website. On the left hand side is going to be students and graduates. So there may be some master's programs available for you. So read the descriptions. But on the right hand side, it says experienced hires. So that is where you'll be looking for like entry level roles, um, anything starting this June. Um, but the website's pretty clear. 
it's a red circle if applications are closed and a green circle if applications are open. So that's the best way to check if you're ready to apply. Um, we do have some MBA programs. Um, their applications, I believe, do not open until June, July this year. Um, and they would be starting for next summer too. So if you are interested in a master's program, um, they do look at graduates, I believe, from the year prior. But I would just confirm reading the job description as well. And Hallie, Hallie is everything a rotation track or is there such thing as an entry level job or is everything a leadership development rotation track? So the programs that I recruit for are rotational at the full time and the graduate level, but there are thousands of jobs that we have that are just entry level um, coming in at the associate or the vice president level that are again on that experienced hires portion of our career website. Okay, thank you for that. Hello, Haley, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Um, with the direction that COVID had, we had a lot of office space and people were able to uh, do their work at home, so to speak. Is that still going to be an option? Like, is it is it still appropriate for me to apply to North Carolina or would I have to factor in that I might have to move um, locations or something like that for that summer internship? That's a great question. So you'll see in the application and when you hopefully receive an offer letter um, that we will ask you to be in the location in which you will intern by that start date. So as of right now, um, our interns this summer, it's still being determined whether it's going to be virtual or not. Um, and same with our full time starting class this year. So it will really depend on, you know, what the current COVID conditions are. Um, but in a perfect world, you would have to be in that location as it would be in person. Um, so you would be expected to, you know, if it's in Columbus, to be in that Columbus, Ohio location by whatever start date that is. I hope that answered your question. Absolutely. Thank you. Of course. Um, hi, um, I have a question as well for Haley. Um, I'm also graduating in May. Uh, with a master's in business analytics and project management, and I'm international student, so I would like to know if you accept OPT. If usually we can apply the international student with OPT. Great question, Natalia. So at this time, um, we don't sponsor international students. You do have to um, be able to work in the U.S. with no restrictions for the Chase Leadership Development Program. But there are other programs and opportunities that do sponsor. And my recommendation is to look at the job description for the jo job you're interested in, and it will tell you flat out um, if they do sponsor or not. Okay, thank you. Hi, Haley. I'm Emmy. It's nice to meet you. Thank you so much for the presentation today. I just had a quick unclarifying question. Um, I'm just wondering, is it possible to apply directly to that full time rotational position or are you mainly looking um, for students to start with that in that shift? That's a great question. I mean, um, so. The internship applications will open within the next 2 weeks, but if we do have opportunities for that full time rotational program, um, back to what I was talking about earlier, those will open up in September, October. So from there, you can actually apply directly into the full-time rotational program. Okay, great. Thank you so much. No problem. I don't know if there was any other questions in the chat. I don't yeah, know. Uh, oh, 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 here's one. Hang on. Okay, here's the question. Okay, one submitting an application and completing the online activities, how long does it take to hear back if you've been selected for an interview? That is a great question. So once you complete, depends also on how early you apply. Now, if you apply the first day applications are open, um, you may not hear back till a couple of months because we do inform you if you're moving forward closer to when we have our interview dates, which is that July to September timeframe. Um, 
For those of you who may be interested, we do have some of our early identification programs that are currently open. That is for sophomores, so those graduating from December 2022 to spring of 2023. Um, those are programs we have Winning Women, we have our Advancing Black Pathways, our Latinx program, Accessibility, um, Military Veterans, Proud to Be, as well as Native American. So if you fall into any of these historically underrepresented groups, we do have programs in which it's like a one to two day summit that you can be a part of. Um, if you qualify and are accepted into this program, your application would actually be reviewed as one of the first applications when being considered for those interview days. So those are actually the interview days that are in July. Um, and those are on our website as well. So that um, link that's been sent in the chat, you can look for them there if you qualify. Applications for that do close April 5th, so definitely apply sooner rather than later. Um, Judy, I can also send you a flyer on that if you want to share that um, with everybody on the call as well. Awesome. So they can apply if interested and if they are fall within those qualifications. Terrific. Terrific. Any other questions? You know, you, you answered so much, Hallie, in your presentation, <laughs> which we're thrilled about. And uh, we do have that PowerPoint. So when we post this recorded um, session, you know, we, we may post some of those excellent um, tips that you gave the students as well. So thank you for that. Um, so uh, I just want to tell just a really quick story, uh, Hallie, you might not even know this, but the person who introduced us, who is a, a, a Chase employee, her name is Shin Wan, she was an intern at a former company that I worked for, and now she's a vice president at Chase, and she introduced Hallie and myself. So the truth is, people can go from interns to vice presidents, have wonderful careers, um, and, and there is a lot of development and, and resources available to employees. So uh, take the time and really do do the application, the resume, and the interviewing, you know, um, as, as best as you can do it, because it chases a wonderful company to work for. So thank you very much, students. Thank you very much. This is it also recorded. So if you know any other students that missed it, you will see it in a few days on our website. Hallie, thank you for your time. Thank you for that great PowerPoint. And we hope to build a pipeline into to face with talented students to join. Okay. And okay. Thanks so much, Judy. It was nice uh, hearing you all. Thanks for all attending and Reach out if you do have any questions, if you think about anything after this meeting um, to that tldp.campus.recruitment at chase.com and feel free to stay connected and connect with me on LinkedIn. Great. Thanks, Hallie. Thanks, students. Have Thank a great day. Thank you so day. much. Thank you.